This is the Leg Podcast. This is LA. This is Evan. And I'm Germany B, the host. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Leg Podcast. It's been a long week. There's been a ton yeah. that's gone down. And I'm tired. Okay. You're always tired, so that's. I'm yeah, tired. that's new, really. That's, that's nothing new. And I'm tired of looking at you guys' faces <laughs> every goddamn weekend. But you know what? We got to uh-huh. do it for the people. All right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Want to right, thank y'all for off. tuning in today. Uh, this episode of the Leg Podcast is brought to you by a very tired and struggling Germany. <laughs> you go out drinking last night? Something like that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> That'd be the only way to explain that. Drinko de Mayo? No, no, no. I was just on my Kanye West tip, so you know. Oh, I was, yeah. uh, golly! I was out there, you know. Speaking of him, make it Dallas great again, you know? <laughs> oh my God, no! Please, no! Hey, can we trade Kanye uh, to the you know another delegation for a bag of peanuts? <laughs> yeah. You remember when Chappelle did that uh, racial draft? Yeah. Like the Chinese drafted the Wu Tang Clan. This this <laughs> would be the perfect yeah. This would be the perfect time. Let's just have a delegation draft. Yes, this would be the perfect time to uh, go on ahead and uh, transfer a boy Kanye. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, geez, dude. I, I mean, try- he's too much of a cap hit. Really, you should probably just cut him. You know, a captain. No, too much of a cap hit. Oh, cap hit. Yeah. Oh, I thought you yeah, said yeah, captain. Yeah. I don't know why you would look at him as a captain. No, that's, that's, that's nothing that <laughs> screams about him uh, being a captain. Okay, you know, it's. He's more like Uncle Tom's cabin. Ain't that the truth? Master, some shit, you know. But bad, bad, bad man. So, so let's let's go ahead. I mean, I know everyone's heard it, but let's just let's just get it out there and mm-hmm. roll that tape real let's quick. Let's rip the band aid off. I don't think people necessarily understand what happened last week with the Great Ameri- uh, make, yeah, make America, America Great, Great Again hat. What are you trying to do with the message you're sending? Well, it was really just my subconscious. It was a feeling I had, you know, like people were taught how to think, we're taught how to feel. We don't know how to think for ourselves. We don't know how to feel for ourselves. People say feel free, but they don't really want us to feel free. And uh, I felt a freedom. And first of all, just doing something that everybody tells you not to do. I just love Trump. That's my boy. Like, uh, you know, it's like so many rappers, you'll look at a video of Snoop Dogg loving Trump, but then he get in the office and I don't love him. Like, Trump is one of rap's favorite people, no, right? We, but we, we, we talk about <laughs> yeah. this, that before he was yeah. elected president, people yeah. in hip hop, it was, it was an in thing to put Donald Trump yeah. in your rhyme somewhere. Yeah. And by the way, right. I am in hip hop, but I'm not just in hip hop. I'm a black person, a black community, but I'm not just that. I feel like one thing is people try to minimize me to artists, hip hop, uh, black community. Yeah, I'm always gonna represent that, but I also represent the world. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like, it's like we're, we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes too too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews, uh, slavery is blacks. So prison is something that unites us as one race, blacks and whites being one race, uh, that we're one, we're, we're, we're the human race. Do you feel that I'm feeling, do, do you feel that I'm being free and I'm thinking free? I, I, actually, I actually don't think you're thinking anything. I think what you're doing right now is actually the absence of thought. And the reason why I feel like that it's because, because Kanye, Kanye, you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to believe whatever you want. But there is fact and real world, real life consequence behind everything that you just said. And while you are making music and being an artist and living the life that you've earned by being a genius, the rest of us in society have to deal with these threats to our lives. We have to deal with the marginalization that has come from the 400 years of slavery that you said for our people was a choice. Frankly, I'm disappointed, I'm appalled, and brother, I am unbelievably hurt by the fact that you have morphed into something, to me, that's not real. Something wrong with this guy. (laughs) Seriously, seriously. I I don't understand 
where you first of all everything that was wrong with that that tmz interview first of all why is tmz conducting interviews in the first place they're freaking tabloid uh paparazzi gossip column right you know yes but they're trying to make themselves bigger than that yeah they're trying to legitimize themselves and be sort i'm of sorry the, but you you a decade too late okay i don't know they've broken a lot of stories they've gotten a lot of of good details and they've also broken a lot of bullshit oh, no totally yeah, true yeah, don't get me yeah, wrong yeah. don't get me wrong but i'm just did- saying they are you can't look at them anymore and say they're completely insignificant and they they aren't well incompetent Oh, you could say they're incompetent, but you can't look at them and say they aren't actually breaking news because they do break news. Yeah, the yeah. fact that it's shitty I mean, do, news. Potato, do you think? Potato. Do you think this is TMZ' biggest story as of yet? As Maybe? far as breaking breaking the Kanye story or breaking the Tristan. I Thompson mean, story. it's not really a, a breaking story. It's just like, hey, let's get this moron on our show and listen to, to <laughs> let's, say uh, more yeah, on let's, things. Let's get our you know? let's skyrocket. Let's get our ratings to skyrocket. Yeah, honestly. I think it's bigger than him being quote unquote a moron or whatever the case may be. I think it's something seriously wrong with Kanye. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. something seriously wrong with him. This is not no. This is not okay. He's just spearing off saying stuff, or he actually feels his way. He might. He might. Right. But but there's something wrong. There's something going on. Everything about the interview from the moment he was sitting there talking. First of all, I'm trying to figure out when did Kanye come up with this old proper Kardashian ass way of speaking and shit like yeah. that. The first time I heard it was when Chris Jenner had that little talk show when she was trying I'm sorry, to sorry, proper? What do you mean? See, okay. <laughs> like the like the pseudo intellectual philosopher wannabe. Yeah, speech? that that bullshit. Well, first off, he does it very very poorly. It. It hurts okay, it to might, listen it, to him. It's like yeah. it's like listening to someone in fifth grade. You say, hey, you're really smart. Why don't you tell me about something? And you listen to them talk, and you're like, oh. Listening to him talk. Oh, God. Listening to him talk. <laughs> nah, Let me tell you something. On. Listening to him talk is like listening to a sailor talk about flying. You know what I mean? Or listening to a spokesperson trying, uh, trying to promote a burger. And it, just yeah. come, and it just comes across it's as, fake it's, yeah, it's, it's artificial so fake, you yeah. know what i mean like he's it's very trying kardashian. way too hard yeah it's very kardashian well, he learned it from the best i mean he's with the listen here the kardashians have ruined plenty of lives yeah <laughs> and they're not done and, and they're not done here's yet. another thing I, here's another thing i have a problem with is kanye trying to be like the black eminem or, or some shit or he's trying to be like another cisco from jewel hill he got his hair all blonde and shit no nah, he cut it off I saw I saw some pictures with his hair blonde. Yeah, his hair was blonde when he did the interview with Charlemagne. Oh, which was right okay. before the interview with TMZ, probably okay. a week apart. Well, good thing and he, he cut, cut that shit off. He cut that mess off. He I looked, thought I thought Kanye was going bald for a long time because he kept his <laughs> he kept his joint maybe, short. Maybe he is. Nah, maybe he's that's not. why he decided to. Maybe nah, that's why. Look, maybe nah, that's he, no. Maybe that's why he's uh, advocating for Trump. You know, to get some toupees. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> It makes it makes over. a shit ton of sense. <laughs> he the wants com- to legitimize Trump and his hair, and, and so and he can get the hair yeah, done. Yeah, he can he can get the two pay now at a there's discount. There's a thought. You know what I'm saying? You get two for the price of one. You know what I'm saying? All a you th- have to do is sell yourself to nev- the devil. And- <laughs> <laughs> I never thought uh, I would see the day where I saw a two pay doing a gangster lean like. Uh, <laughs> 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 like the, the joint is sitting sideways, <laughs> like. I, but yeah, no, it's something. It's something seriously wrong with him. Can, can now, we discuss the actual merits or lack thereof? Of, well, look, first of, of all, what, what I do want to say is the guy that was uh going back and forth with him. Shout out to him. His name is Van Lathan. He actually has a podcast. Oh, he killed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. He he actually you know said a whole lot like. Okay, I will say this. Some of the stuff Kanye was saying, I feel like, okay, it started all right, and then it just took a turn to the left. Right. Like, when he, when it you tweet right, out, rather. yeah, first of all, <laughs> let's go, end. first of all, let's go to the tweets. Now, when he tweeted out slavery was a choice, 
afterwards he came back and you know he pretty much was trying to say that mental slavery which is true because if you think about it if you think about it in present day um you know we're not we're not slave uh we're not slaves like bondage you know Mm -hmm. but you know, you can be slaves to plenty of things, to name brands, to cars, to jobs, to working. jobs, to how you think of to, your to, social station. Yeah, how you, I mean, I, you know, I get that, but I feel like I that's feel, retconning. I feel like, like after he realized just how massively he had fucked up, yeah, he was like, "Oh shit!" Because you can see in the if you watch the video, you can see him sort of stammer out like a. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, I messed up. I messed up. And, messed the up. and then he starts going into the whole mental slavery thing. I think after he realized how bad he fucked up, he tried to do damage control and said, "Oh no, 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 no! I didn't right. mean. I actually meant mental slavery. Uh, that was a choice, you know, that kind of stuff." I well, I mean, the guy did say that there will be real life consequences to what you just exactly. said. Exactly. Yep. Yes. We're and already that's, yeah. That's why he got called it. out. We're so already hard. saying it. Like I'm, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. This radio station in Detroit is boycotting his music. There you go. For his remarks on slavery. Not that his music was well after graduation album he fell off. So it's not like and his I don't, music was any good to to begin with. I don't know that my dark twisting fantasy that should go. On. I like his first. <laughs> I, love the light. I, love the I like light. his first hey. three albums. I like the college dropout. I like oh, those late, are classics. I love late registration. I love graduation. Those but I feel classics. like with eight oh eight heartbreaks, he was trying to. That's when it took a turn. Like he was trying to do this auto tune bullshit. Well, he said uh, Michael Jackson is the one that encouraged him to do that. Michael Jackson never done yeah. auto tune. No, but well, see, Michael Jackson had heard him sing a little bit on, you know, I think what was it, the graduation album or some, or what was the late registration album? So he was trying hey, to get Mama his ball shit. Okay. And then hey, hey, you know, you and then auto-tune. Michael came. Michael came to him and said, "I think I think it's singing is so good." Yeah. <laughs> So he was trying to get his fault. Yeah, and, he, and, that, and, that, he, he, he was then, trying to get that falsetto. And then so he he took the shit to his head and was like, "Oh shit, Michael Jackson likes my singing, so let me just do a whole album of fucking singing." That's what happened right there. Shout out to MJ, but the late great MJ. That album was in. I mean, he had some joints on there. In the night, I kick a tug. Go to the store. I mean, Harlow's was. I like, I like Harlow's. That, that, that no, joint. I, I like it Harlow's. was another <laughs> song on there that 808s kind of went hard. I thought that was. I thought that was popping. No, it's and they like, don't even get me started it's like on my. Tried, it's like it, it's like that was the album that he crossed over. Like you know how Taylor Swift crossed over from country into pop all of a sudden. Oh, I yeah, just yeah, okay. Yeah. The only difference is is Taylor Swift was able to do that successfully. And with Kanye, Taylor Swift was never country. I'm tired of people saying that. What you talking about? Tears drops on my guitar. Maybe that was the only country song she had. The rest of okay, them songs maybe her early albums, maybe her early albums. The was rest country. of them songs would pop with a slight splash dash of country. Well, most country it. music these days is not country music. That is true. It's pop what, country. What do you call it? Pop country. Pop with a splash of country. No, what was we had a term? We were talking about this earlier. Oh, this bro week. country, bro country. That's yeah, what it yeah. was. That's where most of the you know, hey, I'm going to pick up my pig truck. I mean, my pick up my, my, <laughs> <laughs> my pick up truck. It's like now you got country drinking rappers. beers and have sex. You know, <laughs> pretty much that's what it is. That's, now, I mean, now yeah, got, that's, that's now you got country rap. Up. Now you got country rappers like Big Smoke rapping and stuff like that. But Kanye. Like I said, yeah, we sort of lost the thread there. What, what, what was the point of the whole analysis of his music? It's crossing over. Oh, he was saying that, he was saying that his music had turned into trash, and I said, I don't know. I mean, oh, the last two they albums, that yeah, Jesus yeah. and Life of Pablo, them joints, you could have threw them out the window. But you know, you know, my Especially dark twist, Life of Pablo. my my dark twist of fantasy, that joint kind of went hard, you know. But that's besides the point. I think, honestly. He he knew, like you said, he knew he messed up. And then once he knew that he messed up, he tried to do damage control. But what I saw in that interview was somebody that's troubled, mm-hmm. somebody that has lost their way. And like and like Van Lathan was saying to him, talking about, okay, that's when Kanye says, oh, that, you know, we're, we're talking about... Um, we're talking about uh, white people killing black people, but there's so many black people out there killing other black people. 
which that is true you yeah. know it's we can't we can't shy away from that and i do think that sometimes people try to shy away from the fact that we do have black on black crime that is is just as prevalent as a white person killing a Shoot. black person yes However, but but black on black crime are the black people killing the black people killing them because they're black no no and that's why I said, however, uh, that, I think that's what makes it a, a greater issue when a when a police officer shoots a black person in a situation where they absolutely would not shoot a white person. Yeah, no, that's then when it's... we come into the real like, whoa, that's a problem. Even yeah. more so than just someone who's black killing someone else who's black. Right. Not I mean, that not that those aren't both problems. It's just something I mean, that no, society yeah. should deal with in a much more serious manner. And that, I mean, that's what Van Lathan was saying. He was like, "You're talking about nobody saying anything about the black on black crime," but he said there's so many organizations and stuff in Chicago in these urban areas trying to stop this and trying to raise money and raise awareness right. to stop this kind of from black kids killing other black kids and all this, but they don't get the national media attention. You know, what gets the media attention is when you got the, you know, like the Black Lives Matter movement going out protesting, um, protesting, you know, white cops uh, killing black, unarmed right. black people, right. you know? Right. Then that That's what get media attention, but he was like, hey, there are, are organizations, there are people that got boots on the ground that are out there every day in the trenches. Trying to raise and, awareness. Trying to raise yeah. awareness. And trying bring to stop, actual change. Bring actual change. And they don't get the... Uh, they don't get the recognition that they and, deserve. Yeah. And on top of that, this is one thing I have about... Uh, a problem that I have about people in celeb- like celebrities talking about, you know violence and things that i know for a fact they don't deal with kanye lives in calabasas mm-hmm. okay he is so out of touch every he's word so, he says you can yeah, hear he's he out is of touch. so out of touch with the reality yeah. you know he doesn't have to worry about i mean granted there's always a chance but if he's if he's in california or if he's anywhere people know who he is right i right, don't care right. i don't care Kanye has plenty of fans, white, black, Hispanic, all across the board, you know? He he has plenty of fans. So if he got pulled over, you would know that that was Kanye West. Mm-hmm. However, if you was the average If black you was person, the average black person, you know, we're the ones that got to, you know, basically hold our breath every time we get pulled over like we don't know how this is going to go, mm-hmm. how this is going to turn out. We we don't know that. So he's so out of touch. And I think a lot of celebrities in general are out of touch. And yet they want to speak on social issues. I'm sorry. But if you're not down there with boots on the ground, if you're not down there in the trenches, if you're not down there trying to make change and you're just posting on your Instagram and your Twitter about we need to uh, cause change and stuff like that. And if you do do something like a march or a walk or something, it's in a neighborhood where you don't feel threatened. I don't want you to talk about it right. because... Because I rather the people that are actually there, that are actually not disconnected, that are there trying to invoke change, I rather them get the glory. Right. Not you for posting on your Instagram and getting 250,000 likes. I mean, if you're going to post on your Instagram, it's not the worst, but don't say dumb shit. Like, actually think about the issue before I mean, yeah. you do something but like I, that. But I, I looked at this. I looked at the situation like this is much bigger than just don't say dumb shit. Because I see this from I see this from so many celebrities. You like know, they have a huge platform. They have a huge it, platform. When things like this happen, when a Philando Castile uh, situation right. happens, or Air Gardner, you know, that's the one I can't breathe. Yeah. I believe right, so. right. or uh, Tamir Rice or so these situations happen they post pictures they post this long paragraph and stuff like that but at the end of the day are you doing something more now some of them might you know I'm not trying to say that everyone is I just feel like I see too many too many uh, big celebrities that live in in very safe neighborhoods uh, live in neighborhoods that are million very wealthy neighborhoods right. that has all this kind of protection and stuff like that and they live the lifestyle to keep 
to to keep people around them that's able to protect them right. and able to um, make sure they don't get into trouble. They have all these these advantages. But the average uh, average person, especially, I mean, it's even bigger than just us, you know. I mean, the average person that is forced to have to live in poor communities um, is forced to have to have to deal with certain things and certain elements of that community, whether it be protecting themselves or dealing with racial tension from law enforcement or whatever the case may be. They don't have the they don't have the kind of resources to get out of that situation. Now, can they can they you know, anybody if you if you want to change your situation, everybody has the ability to. But some people some people are just dealt different cards, you right. know. Now, Kanye, he's 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 one of the lucky ones, you mm-hmm. know. He has millions of dollars. He's never going to have to worry about anything for the rest of his life. He's going to continue to make money even after he's dead. His kids are going to be okay. So for him to to even try to say that, you know, and it's just like this is my whole thing too. I'm tired of people tweeting. Like if he really felt like, let's just say he really felt like me- he meant mental slavery uh-huh. as a choice or whatever the case may be. You would have made your point very more clear if you would have got out in video format and articulated your words. Well, he tried, he tried later in the TMZ interview to he, say that it was yeah. mental slavery. Yeah, but that was but, after he got shut down. After he had already stepped up the already, he, already put it, he already put his foot yeah, in the mouth. He, I'm sorry, but everything he said afterwards is just damage control. Yeah, I mean the fact that he saw how the, the guy you saw his face. Everybody, everybody else was, so, it, was instantly like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, and, and, and he was asking everybody, "Is how many people feel what I'm saying, or uh, you know, can relate to what I'm thinking?" And you know, you saw a whole bunch of people. <laughs> you're not thinking. You're not thinking. <laughs> like I think the fact that he has most a huge of, platform. Yeah, most the fact, of them people was just starstruck. Yeah. Right, and they they yeah. was just like, "Oh, Kanye West is asking me a question. Let me raise like, my, my hand. hand." Look, look, look. And Van he, was one of the was the one well, to say, "Hey, no, no, I'm not going to." I don't with think that. you thinking at all. Well, I think the fact that he has a huge platform is alarming because these are a type of remarks that could influence the youth. Like, yeah, you know, the, the generation, oh no, the generation, absolutely the, has, the generation has, before us, they could think, "Oh, Martin Luther King was never a big deal because Kanye said so." Right? You know? Wait, and, did and, you say that? Huh? No, I'm saying I'm. This, oh, is, this is what I said, this, if you were to say if something it, like that, if, got it. You know, basically that's what he's saying is he can influence our youth. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? He's poisoning the minds of younger people, in my opinion. You know. It, it, all these black activists like Frederick Douglass, Dred Scott, you get what I'm saying? All the He's, Harriet Tubman, you know what I'm saying? They was never a big deal because Kanye said slavery was our fault. Kanye says so. Right, right, you get right. what I'm I saying? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm getting at with here. Right. You know, so it, it, yeah, it's, so it, it could turn out to be a a, a, a far worse problem. It, far worse, like a brainwashed psychological effect on the minds of the generation before. Oh, no, the generation. That's coming up after us. You and you definitely saying? have everybody on the right side of the aisle is falling over themselves in joy. They are defending him. They are all this damage control, you know, retconning work that I'm talking about. They are, they cannot be happier with this. They are falling over themselves to do all this kind of stuff because right now they literally have an Uncle Tom that they can point to everybody and yep. say, hey, look. Hey, look, this guy says that, you know, everything that we're doing is oh, okay. Oh, I bet. I bet Donald we Trump the, was we eating it up. Green and oh, Donald Trump, I'm trying, I mean, let me find the exact tweet. So for the people that haven't, uh, 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 haven't heard what he said. This is, this is a very prominent black figure who is... <clears throat> Okay, honestly, the the term is very loaded, and I I won't go as far to say. I don't I don't want to say race traitor, but I'm not not gonna say it. It's he's, he's I mean, dancing on that line I mean, of you, like holy see, shit. Have dude. you seen some of the memes on Facebook with his picture and they're painting his face white and pale and all that stuff? Exactly. It, yeah. It, because I mean that is the truth. When you, it's just like what Van Helsing said. Is there are real life consequences for what you mm-hmm. just said? 
He's, gonna he's be really stabbing black youth in the back. Right. Every, black everyone. In there's the going to be consequences for people who buy your music. You're going to alienate a lot of the black people, you know, for buying, uh, you know, from buying your music. You know what I'm saying? Your fashion line that you keep claiming is the best in the world. Huh. People are sure not going to buy that now. You know, not that people was buying uh, it before people... when he was charging twelve hundred for a shirt. Th- you know, think about he's he now has a bunch of not the music, but hey, maybe the maybe the apparel. You have a bunch of your your right wing types who are now. Oh look, we got our guy. Well, I wouldn't even say that. First of all, clearly when I think uh, I can't find the exact tweet, but when Donald tweeted Kanye, he said, "You know, thank you so and so. This is pretty cool." If that isn't the most <laughs> bullshitty response I've ever heard, and clearly he's licking his chops like, listen here, I even got these suckers believing exactly. believing the hype. Mm-hmm. Like if he if if Kanye thinks that oh Trump cares about him, Trump don't give a damn no. about you. No, he plain don't. and simple. He don't. Okay. So with that being said. Like you said, he just alienated himself. But I want to see how many people are really going to. Everybody can sit there claiming they're going to boycott him and stuff. But if Kanye come out with some more fire shit, I want to see how many people are going to actually not listen to it. Okay? All these so-called people. Will people, people yeah, buy people it. will buy it. Yeah, be because it's going to be. Think about this. Three months down the road, we're going to forget this situation ever happened. Because we live in a world of what have you, what have you done for me? Or what are you doing for me now? You know? Yep. So, so at the end of the if day, news isn't recent to the past three days. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't we happen. have a pretty much we have a seventy-two hour uh, span, mm-hmm. and after that, boom, out the window. We another situation happened. We're gonna clearly forget about Kanye West, and then if he takes another eight months off and don't speak again, we're gonna forget this situation ever happened. Yep. And right. then he's it's gonna sad. come out, and then he's gonna come out with some music, and everybody gonna be like, "Hey, ho, let me go and get these Yeezys again." Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I want to see how many people are actually going to actually boycott. You know, so it, it, it'll be it's one of those things. It'll be interesting but to see. I, like, I think um, he'll do. I think he will come out of this with a financial net positive uh, because he, I mean, it's still, name, it's still publicity. His exactly. name is exactly his, his name, name is, is, is everywhere. all everywhere. And and the the driving narrative that I've heard, uh, even among people who don't like what he's saying, is ah, but his music's great. Yeah, he's still he's still great. Oh, he's still a genius. Oh, he still makes fantastic music. So it's sort of and that's sad. It sort of belies this. Oh yeah, wow. he can be a shithead, but then when his album drops, I am totally picking yeah, it I, up. Yeah, I, I look at it like this: a lot of people are going to forget, but there's going to be that certain minority there's be of people. Some, that's true. That that don't forget. He has you know, absolutely lost some you people. Saying, you saying four hundred years of slavery is our fault. So it's our fault that our ancestors got whipped. It was a choice, it, it, sir. It was it a was, choice, and then he choice. said, "We got a choice." And then, and then another thing in that interview, or in that TMZ interview, that rubbed me the wrong way, um, was when he said, "You know, we need to, we need to move on and stuff like that." Now, we don't tell we don't tell people of the Jewish community to move on from Holocaust because right. that would be wrong. No, that would be that, and that, that is, would be that, that would be insensitive. That right would there. be insensitive. That would be wrong. Be, because that is that is a mark in history that will affect not only not only the Jewish people that were around at that time, but that will affect the generations to come. Right. Okay, Absolutely. that is something that you cannot forget because that's a situation that happened. Right. It's too many times, a lot of right wing people tell us, "Hey, y'all need to just forget slavery. Uh-huh. Y'all need to stop using that as the almost like you're playing victim with uh-huh. the slavery card." But at the end of the day. Okay, how are we supposed to forget something where we never got the reparations that we uh, that we were promised? You look you know, at it, forty are, acres and a mu- and a mule. Yeah, like come on, like we never got those. We never got those things. We continue to deal <clears throat> with racism. We mm-hmm. continue to deal with injustice. Um, let's not forget. Uh, Jim Crow laws was only about forty or fifty years ago. Yeah, that was, it wasn't that was like in the sixties, and that was in the sixties. It wasn't like it wasn't like this was uh this was way back in the eighteen hundreds. Right. And even after that, and even after that still discrimination this, on a white exactly, exactly, exactly. So for you to sit there and say, and you're a black brother, 
And you're sitting there telling your black people that, hey, y'all just need to forget that. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to tell somebody, don't be, don't, uh, don't be a slave to the past as far as, hey, don't, 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 tr- don't fall into the narrative that, hey, because this has happened, you can't make the most out of your life, you know, or you can't, you can't strive to be the best you want to be if that's what you want. But that's not what you that's said. Not, that's not yeah. what. That's not what you, you said. You said something. You said something totally different, and Be- then you tried to backtrack. Because yep. I felt like he could have spun this into a positive thing, like you said. Mm-hmm. Is look, stop using it as an excuse for why you can't be where you want to be. Stop using it. As but you an can't excuse. sit there. Even and, that. Know, that it, it, that's. But, I mean, if you are truly in a impoverished neighborhood your schools were garbage right. because they didn't have proper funding yeah low income communities um, yeah. you, i'm sorry but you don't have nearly the advantages that somebody else does yeah i mean yeah like you get the hand that you're dealt with and you make the best out of it well uh, the the thing is it, the best the, you making the best out of it you're at a handicap and i i think that's the problem that's exactly what we're talking about here it's sort of like um uh, how do I how do I put it? Like, yes, you're both technically all of the rules leave you on an even playing ground, but the other guy had you know. Let, okay, all right. Let, let let me set this up. Um, you're gonna have a race. It's going to be a, a downhill derby race. All right. Okay. Uh, you both start at the same starting line. Uh, you both have the same hill to ride down, but the other guy had a month to prepare his car and you had four hours now which one of you is going to make it down to the bottom of the hill the fastest i mean that is but it's not about it's not about who's going to get there the swiftest you know it's about no no no. i'm just saying in this specific know. example where it's a race down oh i mean de- the definitely guy, the person the guy that who had... has the greater lead up time yeah. is gonna smoke you yeah and so that's where we we find ourselves looking at society but i guess i guess i can i guess i can say this for me okay um, you know, I know these things have happened to my people, you know, um, you know, but I believe for myself that, Hey, listen here, anything I want to do, anything I want to be that it don't matter what, it doesn't matter what, um, what advantages and disadvantages that I don't have, because I believe in myself and I believe in, I believe in working hard if i want to get somewhere and if i want to accomplish something i'm gonna do it by any means necessary and and even though it's not forgetting that those situations happen it's not forgetting that hey i don't have the same advantages that a wealthy white kid has Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i'm not going to say okay because i don't have those advantages i can't make the most out of my situation what i'm going to do is hey if i want to go somewhere if i want to be be something or whatever i'm gonna try my best i'm gonna fight scratch claw and get to where i need to be okay and and it's and you know and this is coming from somebody i've lived in poor neighborhoods you know what i'm saying but i'm not a product of my neighborhood okay so but you but you are i mean look at it i mean look I'm, i look at it like this just like germany b i've lived in low income neighborhoods mm-hmm. myself okay and he says something very important is look he's not a product of that maybe he's a product of the drive that fuels him right he's a product of that the product of the drive because, because i will because he because he lived in low income neighborhoods that that has fueled his drive to get to where he wants to be to 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 get the things that he desired. But let's say, okay, let's say we're talking about a very low income neighborhood, very low income. Uh, the public schools, if they have computers, they are so out of date. They are so broken. You know, there there is not really much to them uh, versus a super high income neighborhood, which doesn't just have multiple computer labs, but has dedicated programs helping the kids learn how to use office software or learn how to do programming. They have a, a, a programming class. Now, of those two schools, which one of those is going to produce the high paying computer programming jobs? 
the the kids that or the schools right. that right. Now no I access. totally understand a kid if they really wanted to be a computer programmer they could scrounge up they could you know work a summer job and earn themselves a computer and teach themselves how to how to program and all that kind of stuff. You're right, an exceedingly dedicated student could do that. But if we look at it as a whole, if we look at it as a society, what number of computer programmers are going to come out of the low income versus the high income? And that's the entire thing. Like we can look at there are individuals out there who will play the race card in a complete silly garbage, you oh, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, woe is me manner. But if you look at it on a society scale, if you average out all the people, there is clearly a problem. Right. I, it, well, I mean, it just means that you have to work harder than everyone else. Which isn't fair. Yeah, which, which isn't, isn't right. Fair. It's not, okay, no, it's not fair. It's not fair. Now, we're Life not sitting fair, we're not we're course, not sitting there course. we're not we're not sitting there saying that, you know? Mm -hmm. It it's definitely not fair. But I also I also don't believe in okay, you know, because I've seen this happen, you know. I know people who personally who who will sit there and be like, "Huh, why am I going why do I need to work hard and stuff like that when hey, the the government is going to uh supply me food and and True. stuff like that. Right. True. You have those people. Those people you have those people there. You can't. You can't. And then, or no, nah, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to do this. Even kids our age that live in those kind of communities, much, much rather instead of getting a job, much rather just lounge around, walk around all day, not do anything. Live off of Section Eight. I mean, you know, whatever the case may be. You know. Though are, there are those people out there, you well, know? That's and there's why quite a is, few. That's why this is continue. If it was an easy issue, if this was something where, you know, like either we do it right or we don't do it right, then it already would have been solved. You know, this is obviously a very complex issue. I think people who point at where we are and say, we're good, suck it up, move on, are completely wrong. Uh, and obviously the people who are like, eh, I can collect my check. The government will help me out. Are also completely wrong. Right. So that leaves us at a basically like the government is an enabler. That's a, true. In, in some cases, in, in, in some cases, cases, in some ways, I, I think it, it definitely and and that's and that's cross race. You know, that's that's not right. that's yeah, not that's just. Not a, that's... I don't want people to ever think that oh it's just because that's another misconception when it comes to government assistance and stuff. Yeah, like who's that. pulling the welfare? The, if the misconception is, oh, black people are the main ones on government assistance. However, if you look at the statistics, 52 percent, what, I think it's 52 percent white people mm -hmm. out of the whole country is on government assistance. But we don't hear about that, you know? Like if you, what is it, like West Virginia and some of these very southern. Oh, there are some towns that are run completely on when the welfare checks get cut. Yeah. And that's when everybody goes on a run for and the those are predominantly yeah. And those are predominantly white. Overwhelmingly white. White mm -hmm. towns. So, so it, you know, that's another misconception. That's another thing that is like, oh, okay, it's just another, uh, another mark on my back in that kind of situation. Because, okay... I'm if if it's somebody that's unaware and ill informed, they're gonna think that oh, well, the black people are the one that I'm taking care of all these black people. It's not just like unaware and, and, and ill informed. That's the narrative. There is a yeah. there is a constructed storyline which says black people are stealing your tax dollars. Mm -hmm. How dare those black people steal your dollars? Yeah, and despite the you know the obvious complication of oh wait white people are taking tons of that money too and the the weird thing is i have heard so many stories of people who are white who are taking government handouts who are getting that kind of assistance and are simultaneously angry that those black people are getting the are same. getting, yeah, are getting the, the assistance it's like yeah. i'm sorry what that's yeah. like ben that's been a hypocrite absolutely <laughs> oh it's pot meat kettle basically but they're but they're black and that's bad that's, or and because something. that's shake, because shake because that because they're black it's wrong for exactly. them to do it. But yeah. it's, but, but again, it's okay. Like you said, but it's okay for, 
for white people to get it. You get what I'm of saying? course, of course. The <laughs> noble, the noble white race. That's a double standard He's, if I yeah. haven't ever seen one right people there. Disgust me. Yeah, but. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think he's he needs to get back in touch with reality. Oh yeah, and and then also he let's talk do a, a poverty simulation yeah. would be so good for him. Yeah. Something not not even that. I mean, he has the resources to where he could truly experience a lot of what actual people go through. Mm-hmm. Now he'd be safe doing it, but. He could, yeah. He he should get down in the trenches. Yeah, yeah, and put your boots that on the ground. That would be healthy for him. Also, I think that. Okay, so Kim she tweeted out. She said that you know I'm tired of people making this a you know saying oh he has a mental issue, uh, or a mental ment that is something you know wrong with him like he's mentally ill. And Isn't stuff. he legitimately? Unironically, mentally ill, doesn't he have bipolar? Yeah, but she's Didn't saying, he, wasn't he admitted to the yeah. hospital like a year ago? Yeah, yeah. And he said he was on d- drugs, and then and then and then he and then he go. Well, he said he was addicted to prescription drugs and he opioids and all kind of stuff like that. I didn't say he got liposuction because he didn't want people to call him fat. Oh yeah, and I was drugged the fuck out, bro. I was drugged out. I was on opioids. Two days after I got off of opioids, and I was addicted to opioids, two days I got off of opioids, I'm I'm in the hospital, right? I'm taking two, hey, everyone listen to this, please. Two days before I was in the hospital, I was on opioids. I was addicted to opioids. I had plastic surgery because I was trying to look good for y'all. I got liposuction because I didn't want y'all to call me fat like y'all called Rob at the wedding and made him fly home before me and Kim got married. I didn't want y'all to call me fat, so I got liposuction, right? And they gave me opioids, right? And I started taking two of them and then driving to work on the opioids, right? Then my boy, and I'd always ask my boy, uh, you know, to, to hand me if it's, uh, you know, we on tour, give me some weed, blah, blah, blah. So he had to go give me the opioids. And there was talks amongst my camp, like, yeah, he's popping, yeah, he's popping pills, right? So when he handed to me, this to me, he said, you know this is used to kill genius, right? So I didn't take it. Two days later, I'm in the hospital. I was taking two pills a day at that time. When I left the hospital, how many pills you think I was given? Seven. I went from taking two pills to taking seven. So the reason why I denounced, why I dropped those tweets and everything, because I was drugged the fuck out, bro. He got he got hooked on the pills because I'm like I'm like let me let me get let me get this straight, boo, freaking who? Okay, (laughs) I'm sorry (laughs) that you felt the need to go out and get liposuction. I'm not gonna feel sorry for you because you decided to go out. You you decided to do that. I'm a big I'm a big dude. Okay. I'm a uh, I'm a pretty big guy, and I'm sorry, but if I went out and got liposuction, and then I got hooked on uh, painkillers, ho- painkillers, like- I'm not gonna look at you two guys and say, "Oh, y'all was making fun of me," so that's the reason why I went out and got it. No, you did that to yourself because what Kanye is okay. Maybe you're insecure about your body or the way that you look. But that's, that's you, no, dude. That, that's you. Don't blame that on anybody else. I mean, else. come on. That is the most first world problem. That is the most. Oh, look, guys, I'm out of touch. I am so out of touch. Let me you're scream it from the touch. hilltops. Right. I'm like first you saying touch. slavery. <laughs> first you saying four hundred years of slavery was our choice, and now you're saying that liposuction is our fault. Is our fault? Yeah. Like, like come on, fat. dude. If you no, wanted us to listen, you to looked what you're yourself saying, in the mirror. Don't... You called yourself yeah. fat. Okay. You called yourself fat. Or even if, you, if that's even why if you decided did, to get like, liposuction. Suck it up, dude. Yeah. Like people's gonna talk about you whether it's good or bad. That's just how the world operates. All right. You can't impress everybody. You know what we need to do? Get we need to no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need to we need to start a new campaign. Okay. Okay. Instead of go. saying "Make America Great Again," oh god, we need to make Kanye great again. Okay, make Kanye great again. Okay. Makiga. Yeah. Makiga. Yeah. Make Kanye great again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or make Kanye sane again. Okay. Wait. What about make Yeezy great again, Myga? Make Yeezy great again. Yeah, there we go. Oh, God. Jesus. 
Jesus. Uh, I don't know where he got that. That <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Make Yeezy great again. That That's album funny. was so trash. <clears throat> that album was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Okay. Now, we listen here. Kanye, okay, word of advice to you, okay? Go on ahead and go into retirement like my boy Jason Witten. <laughs> Sit down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> until you until you come un- until you completely well again. And then come back and start making fire music. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, but, yeah. Or be a commentator yeah. on Monday. Um, Monday. but you need to yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can we trade Jason Witten out of retirement? <laughs> 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 hey, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm happy for the guy. Yeah, no, I'm happy for. He, him. he's he's not going to be getting bashed in the brain all day long. He's going to be making comparable money. Mm-hmm. What was he making per year on his contract? Three, four million. Three, four million. So now year? he's making four and a half, right? Yeah. So maybe five. Yeah. So he's, five. he's making more money. He's not getting hurt. Yep. Uh, he's going to be remain a public name. Oh yeah. The real, cr- the only crime, the only crime here no is that he is Bowl. retiring without a ring. That is, that is the thing. That's that why I'm saying. Every Listen here. Look at this. Look I've already said. Look I've already tired, said this. I'm tired of my Cowboys wasting careers. Yep. I've wasting, been saying that. I said too many. Careers. If you think about it, Demarcus Ware. I mean, he actually got a ring in Denver. But you think about people like that: Demarcus Ware, Marion the Barbarian, Tony Romo, Jason Witten. Um, who? Flozell Adams. Right. Um, I could keep going of the the mountains and mountains of talent that have came through this organization. And you tell me you couldn't and you get couldn't, to at least yep. an you, NFC Conference championship. championship. Yep. Like, come on. Can you I just hope, look. I, look. I just hope this next generation of Cowboys. I hope they do not waste their careers like yep. they did. <laughs> like they did with Wedding Ware, uh, Brian. I'm not gonna say. Well, Brian. Hey, I'm not gonna wh- say they waste their career. He figured it out. Where he got a ring. I'm happy for him. But <laughs> don't, I, just don't stay on the Cowboys. And I think I think that's a long term. Well, they kind of pushed him out. Well, yes, you know. but look, that's look they at all it. fall right there. You have players who dedicate their entire careers. They they sacrifice themselves for this team. They stay with the team and they Despite. retire without a ring. Yeah. And so think about if you are a player, you know that you are the top you are the cream of the crop you are so incredibly good and now you are on the dallas cowboys do you want to stay on this team that has a history a tradition of mediocrity not really are you gonna take a pay cut to stay on the dallas cowboys i don't think so not really and then everybody i mean but everybody keeps saying that oh well you know, we need to be more like the New England Patriots. They get rid. They of have them. a tradition of winning. Their players take pay cuts because, because they, they know win. They, and they know they're going to win, and the they get rid. And what they do every four years, they clean house yep. and then basically, basically get a whole new cream of the crop, and they continue to do like that. And I think we, I, 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 and I, but we're we not that. But we're not that organization. So I'm tired of people saying that. Oh, we hold on to our players too long until they too long in the two. That is true. I think that narrative is that, changing though. That narrative is changing, but we're not that kind of team. Right. So right. I'm sorry. I'm tired of people saying, if you a Patriots fan or whatever, besides Brady, you can't sit there and tell me, okay, Brady, who who else? Willie McGinnis. I mean, there's only Ty Law. Ty Law. There's only a few that I can look at them and say they're known for being New England Patriots. Everybody else. Gronk. you Huh? Gronk. I mean Gronk now, but but like I was for the oh you mature. mean long term yeah long term like if you think about TB12 if you think about Willie McGinnis Willie McGinnis was there before they was even winning Super Bowls you know mm-hmm. so you think about people you think about people like that those are people that I look at when I think of who is a legendary New England Patriot yeah, yeah, yeah. that's who it is even though we're ha- we haven't been winning Super Bowls or even making it to conference championships in 23. <laughs> 23 years uh, however i think it's been longer than that 90 the last super bowl we won was, was 95 and we didn't make me. it back so 20 22 years since we've been to a conference championship Jesus. and counting yeah and so so when you when you look at it when you look at it like that, it's like, okay, I understand what people are saying. We hold on to people today too long in the tooth. But the Dallas Cowboys is an organization that is known. 
I mean, one of the reasons why we are America's team, it wasn't just because of winning. It's because we have some of the most legendary players that have ever graced the football field. Yep. When you think about it, we're not the team that, oh, okay, we're just going to keep on stacking up Super Bowl rings, which is true. You want to, you know, you want to get those rings or whatever. You want to see your, uh, I mean, when you start out for six months, you're fighting and battling yep. to get to one place. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But if we're going to be, if we're going to be a team where we, where we don't have no legendary Cowboys players anymore, then I'm sorry, but I don't want that kind of team. Because it's just like, at the end of the day, I want to win. Don't get me wrong. I want us to be good. But I don't want us to be this team where people just walking in. We got uh, we trading players like baseball cards every other year just so we can we can be in the running to win rings I'm after sorry, rings but after I rings. I would much rather have the rings than mm -hmm. long-time legendary players. Uh, if it's a question of rings no getting or, getting 23 years is a long you time you to get rings. don't get to those kind of you don't get to the super bowl without having it was even worse it was players. even worse for the chicago cubs before they won the world series it was like it was going that's in, true it was going above a century that's true but um i don't want to be no uh, do you really want to put us into discussion no, I don't. with the chicago cubs do you do you want to because i don't want that no like I, I don't said, I we want, need a ring okay we we do need rings i get it we need rings, but we at the end of the day, we already got five, number one. Oh, please. No, you're, listen, you're listen. Satisfied no, with... I'm not satisfied. The point I'm making is is that, okay, if we turn into that team where, okay, we're just going to have interchanging players every single year. And we are Super Bowl contenders every single year. It's nothing wrong with being Super Bowl contenders every single year. My whole thing is, like I said, we have wasted a lot of players, yes. okay? And if we turn if we turn into like, okay, we're going to get rid of Dez Bryant. We're going we're gonna to get rid of all these people. And we're going to turn into this organization that, hey, we don't give a care, you know? Like one of the reasons why people love being Cowboys and stuff like that is because the fan base, when you're a Cowboy, you. when you're a Cowboy, the fan base embraces you, you like are, no other. You're a, cowboy, you're a Cowboy fan for life. You well, you're a Cowboy, cowboy for, life. for life. What did we say? about jason witten what was the thing that hurt the most that, that he they was couldn't... a fantastic player and that he they... didn't get a ring the, the situation that you described is exactly the kind okay of thing and okay but, and it, and but let's just say the tony but... romos it causes the jason wittens it that causes is... the wear unless he were that, to leave that, and go yeah get a that, ring. that, that is true press, and in his but... press conference he was apologizing to Jerry for not getting it god that him, hurts it's so like... bad it's like no jerry, jerry should be you. apologizing to you that's <laughs> that's the I way i see it. it i get it however are we gonna be that team that oh okay zeke is our bell cow obviously hopefully if it plays out right zeke is gonna have probably five amazing years with us and stuff mm -hmm. like that and then all of a sudden we feel like oh he's he's a little bit long in the tooth and stuff like that let's go ahead and throw him out of here and get somebody else they don't okay? chop players who are Producing. no but that's what i'm saying some of the fan base want us to be no they don't chop players that are producing but if you look at new england patriots you could still be producing and they're gonna get yeah, rid of you before true they, they, yeah, they, Bel they Bel 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 is gonna get rid of you normally two uh, years before you decline you i'm know sorry what I'm but if you've got a ring then cool I mean, he's he's Don't been be he's been able to make it work yeah, by dude's, getting rid the of dude's players. Dude's a wizard. A, a, a year early, and I feel like the like, Cowboys. I, I feel like the Cowboys front office is turning into that. Is like, look, we don't care if Dez has another decent year in him. We're gonna let him go before he goes completely on the and decline. Get the, get the and next generation. Get the next in. generation of Cowboys in. So yeah, I mean, Belichick has made. His entire career of doing this, reshaping his roster every year, rechanging uh, interchangeable parts every single year, and you've seen the results. They've gotten to a Super Bowl, it seemed like, every other year. Every single year for the past decade almost, we can look for at the, the Patriots. 20 years. Yeah, yeah we, like, we can look at them and say, since yeah. 2000, since 2001, it, they've been the standard. If you ask... Could the Patriots go to the Super Bowl this year? The answer is pretty much always yes. Yes, because it seemed like whatever parts that Belichick is able to get, he makes it yep. worse. He puts his uh, he puts his players in the best position to succeed. 
you know, in the best system to succeed. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Jerry fires Jason Garrett and That's offers Bill Belichick That's a one billion dollar contract. Why in the okay. fuck? That's Did you offer network. him one, one billion? billion one billion dollars with a B. Eh, I'm good. Bring him to Dallas. I'm good. Win us win us a championship. I'm good. It'd be perfect. It's a completely financially stable decision that yeah, he should absolutely Belichick, make. Yeah, but Belichick Belichick is want, going to want complete control over the roster. And 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 Will and McClay st- and Stephen Jones got that down packed. So yeah, they true. don't. They want speaking speaking of that. <laughs> so I checked out all or nothing. Ah man, I still need to watch that. Yeah, me too. So I can say this in whole. I'm not going. I'm gonna try my best not to give up any spoilers. But uh, I'm gonna say it like this. Okay. Um. I understand why they got rid of Dez Bryant. When you look at a lot of that footage, when you look at him this season, first of all, we never, one thing as fans, all we see is them. We see them in press conferences. We see them on the field, Mm -hmm. and and that's it. We don't see what goes in day in, day out. We don't see the film watching and the practicing right. and, and all that. We we don't and them see yelling them at each other. And them yelling at each other and all that good stuff. We don't see that until until now we got a actually a first hand look in, okay, what exactly the coaches deal with, what exactly the players are like when they're not on the field, the attitudes and all that. But that being said, Dez did get too comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, he felt I, like he was invincible. He felt like he was invincible. Um, but I will say this too. Like I was telling LA, you can slice and dice and split up stuff and split up clips to paint the narrative that you want to paint. I'm an editor. So I know how it is to how it is to come in. And hey, you want to paint a certain narrative or whatever? We just gonna we just gonna take the clips that have that supports the narrative that we have. That Des Bryant is a problem. He needed to be gone. Like I said a few weeks ago, I'm not mad that they got rid of Des Bryant. I think I think that I think that it was time, and <coughs> I think that it was time, and I think that. I think that Dak is going to be better. This team is going to be better without Dez Bryant. I do agree with that. When you want, but when I when I look back at the thing, it's just like okay. Before Dez Bryant was let go, Stephen Jones had not one, not two, but more than three interviews. Uh, when asked about Dez Bryant, he has this um, this aggravated, irritated look on his face, you know? Mm -hmm. I I don't really want to talk about it. You know, situation like that. And I noticed that. Um, You know, everybody was pretty much hush-hush. Then you have the the anonymous staffer coming out talking about Dez can't do anything right. Then they let Dez go, and then Dez basically gets in his own way with doing all these interviews and, and all that stuff. That... Right there again. That's that's all. That's you know. We already know what that is. Then after that, you have the all or nothing tape come out that basically kind of supports the narrative that Des Bryant needed to be gone. But I look at it a different way too. Do I think he's he was a a problem to deal with? Yes, probably. But when I hear ninety percent. Of the players, well, I wouldn't even say ninety percent because I actually haven't heard any of his teammates. Like we can sit there and listen to what coaches are talking about. We can sit there and listen to what uh, vice presidents of player personnel is talking about, or the scouting GMs and whatever the case may be. We can listen to them all day about them saying that. But I'm gonna put more faith and weight in the teammates because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's a team sport, and I don't right. care how much, how great of a coach you are. I don't care how great the organization is. It is. It, it takes those players going out there every Sunday and execute. That that is what happens. They have to work together to execute, execute to win, uh, to get the victory. That's that's plain and simple. So when I hear all of his uh, teammates coming out in support of him, like you see like Byron Jones and stuff like to saying that, hey, you know, um, 
he wasn't a problem. You 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 hear other people saying that man, he was a great teammate. He had a great rapport with not just the offense but the defense. Right. So and then you have some players coming out saying that the uh, the the, uh, the organization didn't like the fact that he called out coaches. You you hear all these players basically praising. There's Brian, but when we look at this all or nothing tape, it's it, reading a totally it, different it thing. And that's why I said tongue on that. I promise you there was other good moments. Like if you look at all or nothing, uh a couple of the clips, like for instance, you remember the Washington game when it was raining and it was like almost halftime and Des was holding up too. And I forgot who was commentating that game, but they was like, Oh, well, Des is I think Dez is upset. He's, you know, look like he's saying, I've only got two targets the whole game, blah, 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 blah. When you actually watch All or Nothing, he was actually telling, he was actually telling Jesse Garrett and them that, hey, they're playing, they're they playing cover, cover two. two mm-hmm. And they and they ran cover two twice. That's what he said. They've ran cover, cover two, two twice. twice yeah. And everybody knows if the defense is showing cover two, you you want to throw one of the time is going to the X, X receiver, receiver. Mm-hmm. if they're going to run a cover to a, a scheme. So that's what he was saying, like things like that. But everybody was like, man, Des is over there crying and complaining. I was one of them people like, man, Des is over there complaining like dude will win it and it's raining. And you've already by this time this season, you've already haven't been producing. This was this was what a few games before uh, Zeke was gone. Yeah, um, you already haven't been producing. If I bail, Cal is over here making something happen on the ground in the pouring rain. I will go with the the ground like, game. Go, go do what go, the game tells yeah, you to do. I will go with the ground game versus trying to get you just because you and Josh Norman got the Samsung deal and you trying to get your stats up. But that's and not that's, what was happening. But that's not what was happening. So things like that. And I, like I said, I'm an editor. And I know how a lot of these TV shows work, how movies work and stuff like that. They can make you say anything. It it can it can paint the narrative. Now again, if you're saying something out of your mouth, that's what you said. However, I want to know how much footage was left on the cutting room floor from all or nothing. Yeah. How many, how much footage was left oh, of Dez days. days, probably a month worth of footage right. left yeah, because on they, the cut. Uh, because uh, they've left, been filmed the entire season. Yeah, so. left yeah. on the cutting room floor that could have painted Dez Bryant into a better light. Yeah. But you know what it is? It's, it's meant to get ratings. So what gets ratings? Drama. drama people. Nobody Peace is going to watch it if everybody's in there like, uh, this is the greatest organization. And they sing like, Kumbaya thing, like, or something like Kumbaya, that. Yeah. We all uh, uh, gather together holding hands singing Kumbaya. Nobody's going to really want to watch that they want to see struggle they want to see um they want to see people getting into it and stuff like that that's another thing with this whole jason garrett thing now do i believe jason garrett goes off on people yes obviously Um, do we (laughs) we all saw the infamous clip that's out where he's like man i had the italian italian sub that they put in the italian sub today guys Uh, you know you know the one they fucking put in the microwave yeah i almost i almost literally threw it up Watching this, like, nah, he like said, that. I almost, I almost <laughs> threw that like shit. That. I almost threw that shit up. It was mm-hmm. fucking embarrassed. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never seen anything like this. I've now, never seen anything like this in football. <laughs> now he doesn't read himself a lot. Yeah, like, but but when you look at this all or nothing documentary, Jason's dropping the f bomb. That's probably his favorite word. He drops yeah. the f bomb every other every other word. Like, hey, how you guys doing? F. How you F you wanna F how F F F F F F F like I'm like okay come on I do believe he's probably like that I do believe that the team is like that like they you know you get upset and something not going your way so you like fuck you know mm-hmm. like but come on this and they know that this is being filmed like I'm sorry so you think they're hamming it up a little bit for I the feel like, I feel like Jason was probably doing it a little bit too much because I don't understand how somebody can act one way off the field and then on the field you turn into a totally different person you turn into miss you miss the clap on on the field but off the field you're a totally different person now, I understand I beg to differ. you don't want to you don't want to uh bring down team morale you want to embarrass give the media yeah, yeah you don't want to embarrass I, somebody that, but, but now everybody knows how you are now I want to see some more passion on the sidelines look I, I beg to differ with that because he did slip up and use the f-word in a press conference 
One okay, time. slipping. I, like I said, so, I'm so not you, so saying. You had, so you had Here's a, a different. You if had you had a, slip up and use the f bomb in a press conference, yes, that's one thing. But all we saw from him on the sidelines for years now what, has was been clapping. The clapper. How we doing, guys? And look, so, hey, so, hey, doing? hey, clearly, and sometimes, clearly and sometimes he's, he's not, not even that. chewing any gum. Clearly I think he's, 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 that, I think he's just grinding his teeth. But look, I, I I get it. I'm just saying is, you know how the media are. And just like Germany uh, alluded to is with editing, it can it can paint the picture to a public in a very negative light. And mm-hmm. Gary, he works in a high stressful job where there's cameras all around him right. 90 or 80% of the time. He don't want to let people into his soul. You know, but I feel like with this whole documentary coming out is look, they know you like that now. So I say just let the root just, just let just, it rip. Just let the chains just let, let the chains loose. Unchain yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let her rip. Essentially. Yes. Let her let her rip. Because if you can show passion like that, like, I don't see I don't fired right, like up. right. I don't see why you can't show that on the side of the field. I get it, cameras are watching. I get that media. They like to twist people's words. They like to twist mm-hmm. stories and stuff like that. I get all of that. It, it would be this would be much more of a um, how can I put this? This would be much more of an excuse if the documentary didn't come out. Right. Just he would just keep with the he narrative. would just keep I mean, with the clapping. Let, let, let's be real. He was already getting lambasted. Everyone was on his case already. For being Mr. Clapper on the side. And I can also see how him showing that passion on the side of the field can have a very negative effect when it comes to the media. It sort of opens it it, it, up. Look, it's 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 a it's a right, right, right. Well, you need to stop getting on your players every time they fuck up and make a mistake. I heard that all the years that Bill Parcells was coaching here. That he was too hard on his players. I think there's a balance. It's a balance. There's a balance. It's a balance. Look, it's it's a catch twenty two. Like, like how some people want to see that same passion on the field. Right. That's going to be the same amount of people mm-hmm. that don't want to see that. They feel like only your team needs to see that. We don't need to see that. But I feel like with this documentary coming out, hey, look, man. At this point, go Let ahead. the chains loose. Let go all the F-bombs and... fly. L- l- let it loose. Let it rip. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like a fart. Let it rip. <laughs> so, it's, to me, to me, like I said, I... I I still think a little of it was over overdone, but but at the end of the day, I don't think that's too far from what he is. But ultimately, oh, also, I think that he dealt with from watching the All or Nothing um, documentary. I think that Jason Garrett dealt with a lot of back talk from his fellow coaches. coaches. Yeah. Um, from his staff, from a coaching staff, because um, I'm not trying to give away the uh, documentary, but at the end of the documentary, he thanks everybody, you know, for um, for their hard work this season, blah, 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 blah. He also says, um, he also says, as you know, it's going to be a few coaches that's going to be uh, retiring. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then he said, also, there's going to be some changes to the coaching staff. Um, because he said, you know, in so many words, he was like, you know, um, when I say something, I need people when I say something that it doesn't go in one ear and out the other and you just roll your eyes, you know? Yeah. Uh, we need to all have one voice, you know, and stuff like that. So I think now what we're going to see is cause this is the make it a breaking season for everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and so everybody knows that. So all of this, hey, we're going to stick with the people that we got and stuff like that. I think that's one of the reasons why um, why Jerry had been saying for the long time, we're looking at trying to get rid or trying to change up some of the immediate culture, not the head culture, because we don't see a problem with that. Like, if you want to keep Jason Garrett around for motivation, fine, keep him around. If you want him to be your little puppet, keep him around. <laughs> But when it comes to offensively, I'm not, I am I don't have a problem with Ryan Marinelli. And I think Chris Richard, once Ryan Marinelli uh, retires, Chris Richard is going to take over and um, and going to show uh, 
going to show us the same thing that we're seeing from uh, Rod Marinelli as far as the defense making making a lemonade, not making strawberry, wildberry lemonade out of uh-huh. some rotten ass lemons, you know? Yeah. So we we still going to see that. But when it comes to the offense or whatever, hey, listen here. If 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 they're truly handing, handicapping Scott Linehan's playbook, let him open it up. Let him open it up. Because if he opens it up and we still have a horrible season next season, then hey, that's that way you know he needs to go. Yep. And Jason and needs Jason to go. Gary needs to go. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. But if this, y'all, this season's gonna be a giant test for everyone. Oh yeah. Giant Without test. a question. Giant but I'm, test and but, uh, you know <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see. I it's gonna I'm be I'm looking wanna, forward to seeing where we're going. Yeah, w- how far we actually get will be will be the big question. Hey, well, at least with uh, you know with this team, you know, it won't be no complaints about black and white players on the team. Speaking of that, yeah. high school football coach up in Camden, well, New Jersey, uh huh, he gets forced out of coaching due to get this too many black football players on the team, which is just absurd. So, so the guy's white, um. And he claims that the school has forced him out of his football coaching job and his golf coaching job for having too many black players on the football team. Um, I've never just, heard anything like that. Which is just insane. Now, it's a private school. Right. Um, I don't know if they're legally... I feel like they're legally allowed to do this. It sounds absurd, but I think they can fire him for that i don't know what new jersey's uh, i mean i mean look at his coaching record over the past few years he went 34 and 6 yeah and you fired him because he has too many black players on the team now the school says that that is not the case that uh, we do not comment on personnel matters, but it has come to our attention that he has chosen to muddy the reactions for his dismissal with baseless accusations against the school and administration. Any concern about racism or racial insensitivity is taken seriously and investigated fully. So basically, is their word? No. Is basically is their word against his because he's saying the topic of race came up ten to twenty times. Since he was hired as a football coach in 2013. Yes, and it says that, uh, this is according to USA Today, uh, several students walked out Monday in support of Strom. So, the players, the students believe it. Right, right. Um, And I, you know, I think they're probably fairly knowledgeable about the situation. This entire thing is is gross. It, it, mm. I mean, it's a private school. I'm I sure mean, that technically they're within their rights to fire somebody for that, but uh, I mean, that's there, not a I mean, look there, that is, I would be seeking out. I mean, is there a policy that said that they have to have an equal balance of black and white players? Uh, you got me. And would such a policy be... Almost like the Starbucks, sort of? I, I don't know. You know, know. them guys settled. I think the problem is that we don't have enough information. For one dollar. I think this needs. Wait, what? <laughs> the Starbucks guys, they settled for one dollar, and, and then two hundred thousand d- dollars they gave to youth. Yeah, to youth organizations. Oh. Well, there goes some. there goes the whole uh, accusations of all oh, these dudes are just in it. Well, I mean, debating for I'm, the money. But what right. I'm saying is, can we relate this story to Starbucks? Even though it's it's not as far as him using the bathroom. Or buying something. Um, the Starbucks thing was sort of unequal treatment uh, of those specific people. I guess you could sort of relate it in that it would be unequal treatment of black players. It's it's weird. It it feels it feels different enough to me that they're not directly related. Right. But obviously. Obviously, it's a problem if it's the case. Now, because I'm, he said he was asked multiple times about student athletes' uh, ethnicities, and you know, from, he said from day one, the administration told him that they did not approve of the ratio of black to white students. Did you mean on the football team? Yeah, on the football team, and considering that almost twenty-two players walked walk, out. walked out in support of Scrum. 
is it, it kind of makes me believe that this what he's saying is true, even though it is all hearsay. You know, action speaks a lot louder than words. So if half, I want to say half the entire football team, but 22 players, they walk out in support of Scrum and not in support right. of the school, that is very telling. Right. Yeah. But, I don't I don't know. I, I think we'll have to this is another one where we're gonna have to follow this story. Like the fact that he went thirty four and six. And, and, and he gets was a, fired. It's and a he gets, private school. I could sort and he of was see. a history and he was a history teacher as well. So he he was on administrative he leave. He was on administrative leave from his teaching job. You know, it's one thing to get fired as a football coach. But it's another thing for them to for a school to put you on administrative leave for from him. your teaching job. I'm wondering if there wasn't a group of parents of white students who wanted their kids to play football, and maybe he wasn't playing them, or and they, yeah, and they got they got all booty hurt about it. And I mean, they, I mean, that could be a, a, a possibility. I mean, a very remote, would, pos- a I very mean, remote possibility, well, no, not, but a possibility nonetheless. It's a, it's a private school, so the the big money funders are going to have a giant say in what exactly the school's policies are going to do they can, I mean, I, well take it from take depending it, on how much money they're donating or how much money they're, well, they're able it, to put up they can dictate school policy well take it from a guy that went to private school and catholic school i went to a private school and catholic school growing up right and no way that a basketball coach a football coach got fired because of the ratio of black to white students. Maybe never have school? I ever seen. Never have I ever uh, seen. That. Obviously, this isn't a common thing, or we would be hearing this kind of news all over the country. But I'm saying, it, no, it's not a, it's not, a, it, no, it's not a common thing. I could totally see a school that has a few mega ultra rich. I'm not. I'm not talking your average private school. It, I don't. I don't know what. Oh, you're talking what, about you talk, you talk, Okay, so you're talking about it costs forty thousand a year. Yeah, something just to go where to the, the school. The, the it's almost rich are sending their and then, kids. It's almost and like then, it's almost like boosters trying want, to recruit yes, college players. And yeah. I want little Billy. Little Billy's going to be a quarterback. Little Billy's going to play in the NFL. And yeah. No, and you're going to you're going to start little Billy, or so I'm going to go to the school administration and insane. raise a fuss. Yep. 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 And, and I'm going to say true. it was racism because how dare you, just because Little Billy's white, how dare you not play Little Billy? And why can't it be that, oh, he's just not as much as a talented player as, as some of these other guys? That's the situation. That, and that's know? probably the situation is he wants to put the best 11 guys out there yeah. on, on offense mm-hmm. and defense. I mean, obviously with the record that he has, he clearly has six. a dedication to he, yes. winning games. 34 and 6, he clearly knows what he's doing. And so... You know, now we should say pretty much all of this is speculation. We don't have any other details. Uh, and so we're definitely going to have to follow the story more. Isolated, I think. Do you think it's an isolated incident? Because, no. like I said, I, I because I've grew, because I went to a Catholic school, I went to a private school growing up, and never have I heard in, anything like this. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I, I yeah. do not think it's an isolated incident. You, um, you think? Do you think? Okay, if it's not an isolated incident, do you think that this is happening across private schools and none of none of them are just not being reported? I, I'm like I said, I agree with what Evan said. Um, I do believe that there are certain schools, probably in this country, that are funded by very wealthy parents, and the parents come in and dictate, saying, "Hey, this is the kind of stuff we want to happen." Yep. Um, it was a movie. What but it's was not that? necessarily all of them. I'm, yeah, it's I'm not. not it's not all of them. Everywhere. But I do think that it's some. I don't. I don't think this is the only isolated incident that has happened. I don't think nobody's probably gotten fired. But I do agree that maybe there are some schools out there where the wealthy parents are coming in saying listen here we want our kid to be the number one sports guy we want our kid to be the number have the lead and the play and solo uh, solo at school and they're on the pta and the pta basically runs the school right and because and because they they can go to the principal and say listen here you know that eighty thousand a year that i was giving you and uh (laughs) And just extra money mm-hmm. to for uh, to raise awareness or or, or to raise funds for school and stuff like uniforms that. Exactly. And stuff like oh, that. remember that time I, I donated computers to the computer yeah. lab? Well, you I'm know, gonna take those out. I'm gonna take those away, and then the school gets scared and say, "All right, well, let's roll over, exactly. so we don't create a fuss." And, and, and see, this with the guy, people that are funding the school, this guy went to the media. He went to 
He went he went loud. Yeah. Which takes bravery. You gotta look at it because they can straight up blacklist you. Oh yeah. Oh, every yeah, 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 every yeah. school in the area can look at him and go, Oh Especially he if he wants it, to have a mouth on him, Especially eh? if the allegations are not true. But Well, I mean, yes. But, but I mean, but something tells me these allegations are true. No, even if the true. allegations are true, if you're a school and you're looking at him and you're like, Oh, this is somebody that we can't necessarily push around, let's just sort of let him languish over there. Right, right. And so hmm? it does take bravery for someone to speak up like that. So I guarantee you that the number of times we'll we'll just for the moment assume that what he's he's saying is one hundred percent the truth. Um there are for every one of him, there have to be a dozen or more people who get zapped for that reason. But not conforming and they, with and they their just, viewpoints. I yes, and they just go, oh. And they move on, and they very quietly, very meekly go and find another job. Now, I am not blaming those people because, I'm sorry, you got to put food on the table. Yeah. So sometimes you have to you have to knuckle down and you have and to swallow you your pride and, and eat that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I'm... It it happens. I I guarantee you, oh, it yeah. happens. Without question. Well, he's already lowered up. Oh, he, so, this dude's going loud. This so dude this, is yeah, not going to lie down and take this. Nah, <laughs> they, like he's he's going all the way with this, and you know I hope he wins because you know twenty two players walked down and supported him. Yeah, that that says a lot. It would be interesting to see why, what they say the story was I, I, they're not going to comment because they don't want to lose a lawsuit no no they're going to let that come out in court and i'm sure that once it comes out in court we'll probably hear about it but that'll be months from now we'll have to remember to they're going to be a lot more stuff that comes out in court than what you're hearing and, and we'll right find now. out we'll find out who was who was telling the i mean truth is there because there's got to be an underlying reason to this yeah either he i mean Maybe he was embezzling funds or some other thing, and he made some last ditch effort to like, oh wait, it was it was actually because y'all were you know being racist or something. Uh, I don't think that's the case. I'm just saying maybe it could. It's, Anything. A, it's a possible yeah. alternative. Anything is possible in this day yeah, that's, and time. That's, that's so what true. I've learned. Anything is possible. We yeah. have any other topics we wanted to? Uh, what about the Stormy Daniels? Oh, the Stormy. Trump. This entire week has been Rudy Giuliani. Um, I would say sticking his foot in his mouth, uh, going on TV every single day and directly contradicting what the president has said in the past, uh, proving the president to be a liar, proving the White House to be liars, um, proving like his own lawyers to be liars over and over and over again. However... I don't think he's sticking his foot in his mouth. And, and here's the reason. Uh, Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer, who is currently under federal investigation, they raided his house. Yeah. They have his communications. They know everything. And so what, what I think that Rudy Giuliani is doing is he is coming out and he is basically softening the blow. He is coming out and being open and honest with everything now so that it's not the prosecutors coming up and charging people. It's yeah. him coming it's out it's and saying, coming oh, out yes, saying. yes so the basically, $130,000 was paid out, but it was just a loan. It so wasn't, basically, it wasn't the prosecutor, finance. Basically, if the prosecutor is like, okay, well, the prosecutor is telling me what I already knew is he came out and paid $130,000. Is he's like you said? He's trying to be open and honest but, but about it, it this now. But it softens the it softens, it softens the public the, opinion. It softens blow. the public opinion because honesty goes a long way. Even if you're being even honest you're, about being a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, even if you're, even if you lie about the toupee being, lie about <laughs> your hair being real. I mean, I get it. I, I understand. Like, but yeah, the, the fact that they come out is basically look. I'm gonna get out in front of this before y'all can. So, so basically, this, what y'all basically, if y'all come right behind me and say the exact same thing, y'all already beating a dead horse. I've already come out and told the truth about this, so they already know. The public already know. Right. You know what I'm saying? The public already, you know, what you're telling me is something that they already knew. You know, they well, knew you, we paid one hundred thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, what's to this the one. what's the big deal? What's hey, the, even though it's a huge deal, it's, it's a, a huge massive deal. Massive violation. If it's a violation, you know, they're all the lawyers are all going to look at it. But the the story today, just today at ten o'clock our time, uh, Central Rudy came out and basically said that. 
perhaps there he's not ruling out the possibility that there were other payments made to other women okay if he's not ruling out the possibility that there was other payments made to he women pretty the fa- much knows that there were other there was payments other payments you're pretty women. much that's like the government telling us not to panic oh yeah when, that's, when they tell you not to panic that's when that's you panic. that's that's, <laughs> that's the time to panic that's what this sounds like oh yeah you know there may have been other payments you know paid to women mm-hmm. you already said okay basically you already you know there was other payments paid to, to women you're coming out and trying to give a, how can I put this? I want to say a half-assed story, but kind of like uh, not giving a straight answer. Right. Like there may be was mm-hmm. other payments, you know, made to other women. Well, he's know, he's not saying that there were. He's not real. He's not ruling out the. Possibility. I'm not saying I'm not saying it was, and I'm not saying it wasn't. I can't confirm nor can I deny, you know that. Which there was if you're other coming, pay- you're coming. This isn't a courtroom. You're coming out and saying this. You're, you're, this is <laughs> this is an basketball. interview. Like, dude, why are you on air saying this kind of stuff? He's trying to get his 15 seconds of fame. He don't want to. He don't want problems down the road. But they're entire, you don't want no problems, big fella. Like <laughs> their entire <laughs> argument, and this is what gets me, is the one hundred thirty thousand dollars. The entire issue, and I believe we've talked about this before, is. You cannot donate. I think it was 2700 was the maximum amount that somebody could donate to a political campaign mm-hmm. uh, that year. And obviously, 130000 That's a lot. Of, that that's is a, a shit ton huge of money. Huge. That's a shit ton of, that. of money. And so the argument was, oh, no, it was a personal thing. It had nothing to do with the campaign. It was just a personal thing. Um, and it was also a loan, and the president paid it back. The entire story is complete bullshit. They have themselves said, hey, imagine it's late in the election, and right before this happens, someone comes up. I'm sorry, you referenced the election. That means that this payment was, was about made, the election. It was about the you election. You can't say that it was just personal. Because you can't put, you can't put election... And, you can't mention and, and the election. What, either you can't either put it's election. about his relationship with Melania... Or, or, or any other thing about his own personal right. life. As soon as you say you can't election, put literally you can't put election and a hundred thirty thirty thousand dollars in the same sentence. Yes, and as expect soon as you people not those two, those are what, connected that, permanently. Right, and expect people not to put two and two together. Yes. Oh man, this was made during the campaign when the max given it could only be 2700 yeah you you more than overstep your boundaries in that point as soon and as you, you said that sentence you, you lost you pretty much contradicting your own yeah. self yeah you it's, pretty it's much contradicting your own self you can't put a hundred thirty thousand dollars and that an election in the same sentence and i don't even know like why try why even argue this like it, it's so obvious to everyone so why are you coming out on tv and basically saying excuse me we violated campaign finance laws. Uh, I just want everyone to know that we definitely, for sure, violated <laughs> yeah, right. campaign finance laws. Maybe, I, I want no confusion on this. Maybe subject. I mean, oh, right, well, right. maybe he's coming out and saying that because he knows shit is about to hit the fan. Well, then why the hell did he Big join? Time. He just joined like two weeks ago. And you already coming out and that's like someone you know rowing up to the side of the Titanic as it's sticking up out of the water going down like excuse me can I get on board yeah but like, the ship right, is sinking <laughs> this is a sinking ship do you see the do you see there's no chance for a light boat there's no chance for a light boat the <laughs> there's no chance to abort the mission you know you're com- you're pretty much a you pretty much you're telling going to board a sinking ship shit. yeah absurd. absurd that's that's absurd well I mean yeah, that's the that story is going to continue to go on and on and on like the end of Johnson. Honestly, Funny. I'm tired of talking about it. Let's talk <laughs> about something light and fluffy and really like, easy. Jeez, well, like the Redskins sex party <sighs> that they Ooh. had. And was it Costa Rica? Yeah. Oh, like, yes. This completely normal and totally above the board um, acceptable behavior that the Redskins man, it seemed participated like, in. It seemed like football cheer- cheerleaders are speaking out more and more. I remember the Dolphins cheerleaders speaking out about Which is this sort of good. Stuff. Like, That's good. Thank goodness that we're finally getting to the point. So, so the the to sum up the story, um, some cheerleaders were brought out to Costa Rica uh, for a calendar shoot, which is something that cheerleaders do. That's that's normal. Yeah. However, uh, as soon as they hopped off the plane, apparently their passports were collected up, and at that point, you should be freaking. 
when you hop off the plane in a foreign country and your passport and your gets passport collected, immediately taken, you can't you can't leave the country. The alarm without it. bells need to be blaring. The red lights need to be spinning. Uh, this is bad. Now, ostentatiously, this is. Uh, but is that, or ostensibly a lot of people say it? that's normal like normal procedures though, see to take they away the say passport. that so that you don't lose it but i'm sorry if i'm in a foreign country and they're collecting up my passports unless i'm on a school field trip uh that's a problem these are adult women and you taking away someone's passport in a foreign country is it's is wrong. hugely wrong, wrong. Yeah. and then they were expected to be escorts um not the technically technically not the the escort escort that we know the term by, but they were to escort around uh, prominent boosters for the organization. So at not a, knowing at they was going to appear topless. In yes, front of them. and then they were also required to appear topless. So this entire thing is disgusting to the highest degree, um, and I'm I'm sort of wondering why we haven't heard more from the NFL proper about this. Usually. Uh, Goodell has the knives out. But for... this is the Cowboys. If, oh, if this was the Cowboys, he would shut. He the... would be raining hell. He, would, like he would shut down our 2018 season. Yep. He'll try to take the team from uh, right from Jerry. From Jerry. Exactly. No question. So okay. No question. So the NFL may have not come out and talked about this, but there have been uh, two other Redskins cheerleaders that have defended the organization. Oh really? Oh, I didn't hear about this. Mm-hmm. Th- uh, basically, they said the topic, the topless being forced, just simply not true, said Charles Bishop, a former Redskins cheerleading team captain who was present during the trip to Costa Rica. Uh, this was, she said, this was a calendar photo shoot. We're always covered, even if there is a topless photo. Some girls were excited to be doing those things. We always have the option to say no. We are never forced or told to do something that we don't want to do. Uh, those terms being pimped out and the score, they just need to stop because it's absolutely not what happened. I think that being friendly and receptive and welcoming to sponsors is completely different than being an escort. I can't speak to how they feel. We know nothing was ever forced upon us, and we never felt that way. You say we, uh, some of your teammates, some, some of your, your, yeah, your organization disagrees. Disagree. 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 Yeah, this, you speak, so you're saying we is, you're speaking for everybody. Yep. It may have not happened to you, but it probably happened to them. I, I I don't know. I don't know. At that point, it sort of becomes he said, she said, or she said, she said, rather. Um, I don't know. Some of your some of your group obviously thinks that it crossed the line. Well, and look, look, and she said, look, I can't speak to how they feel. We know nothing was ever forced upon us, and we never felt that way. Key words is I can't speak to how they feel, but yet you're speaking for everybody. Right. The yeah. women were not selected by the sponsors to escort them to the club. We were always with someone we knew. We were always together. I hate that this negative life has been portrayed on our organization for something I was passionate about. So many women felt that this was the best years of their lives. My experience was never anything that was portrayed in this article. Okay, keyword. Your experience yeah. But was you something. Can't, you can't be speaking for everybody. Right. Okay? Well, she's sort of saying, I mean, she's combating if, if they were all told... As the story goes, if they were all told that they must escort these boosters around and that they must be topless, then for her to dispute that does sort of... I mean, if it's a collective thing and she says it wasn't a collective thing, then, you know, they're not going to necessarily single off... I just hate the contradiction to this. She said, I can't speak to how they feel. Yet you're putting we into the... You're right. You're right. There is an inherent contradiction, but... Let's say let's say that she's completely right. Then, I mean, both of them can't be right. It right, can't right. be. It can't be that. Okay, they but were what? All forced, but also they. Okay, but all what? Forced. Okay, but what if this did happen to two Redskins cheerleaders? It never happened to her. She's saying, "Look, my experience." But then it was wouldn't never be that they were un- all forced. Okay. The, the the story according to the accusers is they was forced to. They were all forced. Force- to do this thing. Now, maybe maybe it was a bunch of them chose to be topless, and then the ones who were holding out were sort of pulled off aside and said, hey, get in line. I don't know. I don't know. I, this whole thing is a, a giant mess. Well, and also, I'm... 
I'm not trying to say that maybe she was intimidating into bringing that out, but... Oh, you mean the one who's who's come to the defense? Yeah. Oh, yes. Maybe but she's what doing it? Oh, damage absolutely. control. Exactly. Damage you know, control. If like she's if a, a true, a true, she wants to, you know, keep her organization in good standing, it makes sense to say, hey, uh, what's her name? Uh, Gil? Hey, Hold Gil, on, get uh, out there. Uh, you know. Because is she the captain or what is she? Okay, so let me see. Ch- Charles Bishop. She's a former Redskins cheerleading team captain charo 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 bishop a former redskin cheerleader team captain and another former team captain rachel gill appeared on the the mc today show okay and talked about this so those are two redskins former cheerleaders that was defending this that was defending the organization Former cheerleaders defending the organization. It'd both be former, interesting both, to see both, how they both are former team captains. Look at the common denominator. Uh-huh. Both are former Leadership team positions. captains. Yeah. So pretty much that could be their job. Is look, we need to get out in front of mm-hmm. this and try and minimize the damage as It'd much be as we can. Very interesting to see how NBC came by their contact info and decided to bring them on, or how they were motivated to to bring go them on the say show. anything about it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I can't hold no weight to that. But then also, let's just say they genuinely, you know, feel this way. Like, hey, it could, you know. Or uh, maybe they're false accusations. Maybe, you know, maybe or the maybe they are. Maybe, so. maybe they are false accusations. But I will say this. No, no person can speak for how another person viewed the situation. If a person, if they got off the plane and they was immediately... Their passport was, was taken. Was taken or whatever. And a person didn't say nothing in that moment. I can't sit there and say that, oh, they could have freely went home and, and did what they and wanted no to do. Because if they if they felt intimidated, right. you do things yep. out of fear. Right, you know, right, if right. you if you're in a situation and you feel intimidated, some people may react differently. If a, some people, if you feel intimidated, they're gonna not stand for it. But other people they they might be like, uh, I like I want to keep my know. job, so I exactly. feel like I feel like I have to do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so that that's where that's where the problem that's where the problem comes in for for that kind of situation because it's just like you can't really speak for how other people felt in a situation. And I felt like she was you know? contradicting herself when she said, "I can't speak to how they feel." We know nothing was ever forced forced upon us. She's talking about her and right and uh, and uh, Bishop. Nothing was ever forced upon them. Of course not. Maybe y'all because you're the team captain. Y'all the team captains. Yep. But like I said, you can't speak for how everyone feels. Yeah. Because it didn't happen to you. It happened yep. to them. Yep. Wasn't there some tweet? Who is who is the one who stuck their foot in their mouths real hard? Uh, saying that since uh, they're Brit. sex objects or something. Brit, I think her name is Brit McHenry. I want to say, I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, she's she stuck, not part of the foot, but the, the entire whole, foot. The whole foot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Big toe and pinky toe. Okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, I'll get crushed for this, but let's be serious. These women dance in glorified bras and underwear on a field for male entertainment. If you don't want to be treated like a sex object, perhaps don't be one Bruh. for money. <laughs> From Britt McHenry, who is a political host on Fox 5 in D.C. Just because... Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yet you deserve you to deserve be crushed to get for creamed. This. Saying saying I'll get crushed for this. Like ooh, don't. You know touch you're gonna me. get crushed. I might get crushed for this. You know you're gonna get. crushed I might for get that. crushed for exactly. saying some dumb shit. But here I go. Um, first off, the entire situation she's she's throwing out there assumes that what the women are saying is correct. So we'll treat it like that. Uh, there is a gigantic difference between. Being a cheerleader, yes, you are sort of you, yeah, you are yeah. embracing the objectification. You know, people have a problem with that, but there is a giant difference between that and being an escort and being forced to go topless. Yeah, there could not you can't overstate the difference. Uh, that's a that giant. That that's a giant gap. Mm-hmm. That's not what you're. That's not in your job description. No, it's definitely it's definitely insensitive. I think. I think it's one of those things where do you really ex- do you really um what's the word I'm looking for? Do you really 
expect any different from people like this. That's true. This is the shock value exactly. that they look for. Exactly. And and they do quote unquote feel, you know, feel this way or whatnot. You know, I don't expect I don't expect nothing different from idiots like this, you know? Yeah. Like you can't sit there and say that, hey, okay, you object you objectifying yourself and blah 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 and this and that. Oh, and- she said, are we supposed to feel sorry women willingly went on a yacht for a party? Way to completely wow. misrepresent the issue. Issue entirely. At hand. Yeah. That's oh. that's not the issue. The issue was not we went to a party. The issue that they're claiming is we were forced to be escorts to these men. Right, and we was forced and to and we was forced to be topless. That's <laughs> she also put out another tweet. She said, So SI swimsuit, that she was tagging at SI swimsuit, repeatedly said women are empowered, posing naked. Redskins cheerleaders willingly do that in a photo shoot for men and now objectification is wrong. On with uh, Clay Travis, out kid talking uh, hypocrisy and dumb messaging tomorrow at 8 Oh, my God. Hip- <laughs> unbelievable. Just just unbelievable. Uh, but that's, hey, that's red meat. That's red meat for the people that she's talking to. Right. That's the the sharks come out to, uh-huh. to the sharks come out to feast. You get a bunch of, of you get a bunch of people who are just like, yeah, yeah, like, I agree is, with that. I Ooh. agree. She made some good points there. Like, fuck out of here. She didn't make no good points. She made dumb points. Mm-hmm. It's misogynistic and it's sexist when a dude says it. But when you see another woman, it's just like, okay, you're just basically combating the um, the narrative that our celebrity in chief talking about grabbing by the mm-hmm. poom poom. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's the same thing. It's, it's the Kanye situation. We're right back to it. Yeah. It's the, oh, look, a black guy said it. Ooh, yeah. ooh, 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 ooh. So it must be, it must be right. Again. Like I said, we're gonna make Kanye great again. All right. Okay. That's that's gonna that's gonna be the new campaign I'm starting. Make Kanye great again. Okay. okay? okay? This is gonna be a leg intervention. Okay. A leg intervention. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna make him great again. Hey yo, this is your boy LA telling you to tune in to the Leg Podcast right here on the TMC Network.